You're not supposed to go around licking rocks, but right. actually, no, I think you, he was a big advocate of licking rocks. I don't really <laughs> remember. Hello, and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I'm Amali. Amali? Papa Molly, I'm sweating. <laughs> this here is Frank wearing his green hoodie. Shout out the Eagles. Shout out the uh, cucumbers. Shout out the grass. And the emerald, which is my birthstone. The And the frogs. And the frogs. Happy Frog Day, um, which is every day here because that's half of the croak and crow. I had a frog cross my path yesterday. Really? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, I, of course, I had to Google it. Because they don't normally cross my path. You should have kissed it. Might have turned into a prince. <laughs> um, I was do I was walking around a track at the Veterans Field. And Shout out the veterans. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I it was it was very dark. I I, I didn't have much time left. And I thought I could still make it, and there's no lights. So on. what? Your car turned into a pumpkin? Like <laughs> no, because it's dark. <laughs> okay. Pure dark. You know, you want to go when there's light. Yeah. And um. I live in a rougher uh, side of town. You don't yeah. know where I live. <laughs> yeah. Be home before the street lights are on. <clears throat> yeah. And there was no lights. And uh, so anyway, it was really, and I can't really see in the dark. <laughs> so I was actually more afraid of falling because mm. um, the other bad thing that was on the ground was lots of wet leaves. So at some points I was walking, you know, like. My shoes have no tread on them. Yeah. That I'm terrified when I see painted like a uh, crosswalk. Oh, right. Because my feet just slip out from under yeah. me. Yeah. On like, it's just that thin layer of paint. It'll right. do it. Yeah, so uh, I was being careful. But I, uh, there was a dog barking, took my attention that way. And then I saw something, and we see a lot of rabbits uh, where we live, oh, darting yeah. across streets a lot of rabbits. Or, or paths. So I, it kind of was a bouncing situation. How big was this? It was small, but my mind was, it was dark and it was small. And I just thought, are you a rabbit? But then, of course, something said, no, like it is too small. The Lord. What is it? And then I looked, it was a little frog. Oh. And he hopped across. It was it was grass, asphalt, grass, and so he hopped across. Ah, that reminds me of those books we used to read. Oh yeah, it's like Toad Away and yeah. Toad Heaven, Australia. Read, yeah, go read those books. They were they were fun little books. They were. Um, and so I thought, oh no, frog. You think lots of witches have frogs? Yeah, but they do. They have frogs as pets. Yeah, they're always like in the cartoons and stuff. They're like on their shoulder. Or... Which is kind of creepy because also in a lot of like, I feel like uh, witches' cauldrons, there's frog legs. It's an ingredient. You throw you throw in a toad like, or something. Like the cat, the black cat is like their pet. Yeah, you never throw in a cat. No. Well, I looked it up and, 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 and um, you know, it's it kind of was 50-50. It was like it could be a good, it could be good omen or a bad omen. I'll take good omen. It's something. It's I'll take good so, omen for 500. Something good, something good is going to change for me. Yeah. But, um. That's frogs, but I am I am a, a molly, which is a female mule. Oh! If I was a if I was a boy mule, I would be a jack. Jack. Mm -hmm. Why does that Why does that sound like I should know it? Is there like a storybook or something, like a, a jack a jack the mule? I don't know. Jack the mule. That sounds. Jack and a molly. Yeah. It just sounds like two names. I know it's crazy. So um. So, because today is Wednesday, October 26th. Ooh, it's getting the spooky season. It's National Mule Day. National Mule Day. Mm -hmm. The animal where you breed a horse and a donkey. Yeah. And a mule can't breed, which I still find fascinating. It is so fascinating, isn't it? Now, is it like they really can't? Right, they really can't because um first of all, it's not just a it's not just a horse and a donkey, it's a horse mother and a donkey father. What happens if you go the other way around? I don't know. Wait, a horse mother and a donkey father. I guess that makes sense because a horse father would be too, too big, big for a monkey. Okay. A monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm really just crossbreeding. A donkey um, mother. The reason that mules are sterile is because horse and donkey chromosomes are just too different. So how can they? Do they can. The, so the horse and the donkey can uh, uh, right have a mule, but then once that mule's created, they created something with chromosomes that can't reproduce. Not even with another mule. Not even with another mule. So I was like, wait, mules are in the um, Bible. They're all over the Bible. Yeah. And I thought that's really old, you know? Yeah. So when were they making this thing? And like, it, 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 it. But mules are also good, though. Like, For what? Or they're useful. They're so useful. Because like, what? They're they can... better than a horse or a donkey. Yeah. Because like, donkeys are what? Less, 
what is it when someone's really well like trained to be a, like a workhorse um endurance yeah but like they're strong right like they're like they're like sturdy a mule gets its athletic ability from the horse and its intelligence from the donkey because oh. aren't donkeys the ones that are I mean, that's a mule i think that was a donkey too it's like i'm not going yeah maybe. you know like a horse a goes. horse yeah a horse will just run yeah a donkey can literally a horse like, if you have to make break, me if they call it breaking a horse yeah it's uh when you have to you domesticate it yeah it's a wild horse and you gotta teach it hey i'm i'm right doing this where a donkey's like I'm hanging out, and I mean, I'm too smart to like. Right. A donkey probably looks at a horse, and is like, "You big dummy! Like, yeah. look at you doing all this work. Why? Like, it's a, yeah. a donkey. Kind of reminds me of a cat. Yeah. And a horse is like the dog, the golden retriever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you create some, and what the cat's like more intelligent than the mm-hmm. golden retriever, but you can't get it to do anything. Mm-mm. Now imagine a cat that can do all the tricks. Right. And like has the athlete has the uh, like the, the hmm that would be something. I'll call it a debt. Yeah. Um, cog, it's it, it's so cog. interesting. Uh, you know, I, th- I saw like, I don't know the number, but like thousands of years before Jesus. Um, so well, dude. They no, were, wait, they rode a donkey into. Yeah, maybe. Uh, flight from but Egypt. like, so way, way, way back, 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 back. They said, let's try this out. And, and, and we still have it today. Now, my question is, do you think the original mule was from experimentation or do you think it was just from no i don't think so because i I don't think they happen in the wild like i think they wouldn't be together yeah yeah where do donkeys originate from just told you where do horses originate from well no like where's like a wild donkey in america i don't know in america um george washington was very fond of of this idea the mule yeah and um he made 50 of them and started the american mule more popular i guess not started it because i think they came across with christopher columbus but you know he was like this is a great animal to work that's crazy though right because normally like you know where they say like uh when you have these these horses that win the races yeah i think we even talked about it before you can like sort of trace all of the horses that are being bred yeah to one great horse right because they try to keep reproducing the same one but mules are always will always be new yeah. Because it's like you can't find the best mule and say, let's continue this. Like you can't make a, a, right. a super mule. Right. Like you can make a super horse. Right. Horses today do not look like they do did back in the Bible mm-hmm. days, right? Right. It's years of evolution. Mules can't evolve. Only the donkeys and the horses can. Right. The mules will always be a little combo. King David had a mule. Really? Sweet. How long do they live, mules? Uh, his is still alive. <laughs> 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 they can't reproduce, but they also can't die. <laughs> they can't die. Um, so it's a commitment to make one. We live in Pennsylvania. Yeah, we do. And <laughs> mules were very, very important um, in our history because of coal. Oh, they would pull the coal out of the... I guess. That makes sense. They were... They were the... So um, years ago, and um, I remember this, in Pennsylvania, it was in 2003. So you were but a wee lad. Um uh, they had it to celebrate the history of the mule in Pennsylvania. They had this thing and um, it was it was so weird. I didn't even know it was happening. I just would see it. And they had these mules or I don't know what they did. They got all these people together, artists, historians. I don't know. And they made like, I don't know how many mules, 100. I don't know. They made all these mules. But like, you know, nowadays they'll have people like a famous person makes the Nike shoe. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, look what he did. Well, was it, they did that with mules. And uh, so this is like the Travis Scott mule. Yeah. But like, you don't even get to know who the person's name was because they're, they're nobody you would know. But like, you would see them, like when you were driving, you would see like a mule and one was like completely uh, painted in flowers. Oh. And one was like missing his middle. And one was all silver with the hat on or something. It was like this, this, this thing. It sounds like all like how NFTs are now. Yeah. Like that whole, uh, was it like the ape collection? Yeah. Crazy ape. So they had all these mules and it was to promote this, the history of mule ship. In, um, mule ship. In, in, um, in Pennsylvania. But then they auctioned them off. They auctioned them off. Because, Wait, these were real mules or paintings of mules? No, they were like sculptures. Like you'd be sculptures, driving yeah, down the road, okay. you'd see a sculpture. There was two poses. One was the stubborn mule. Yeah. was leaning back. And one was the standing mule. But now, all this time passed. Well, I don't even think it's now, but. Anyway, you can go on the internet because now what they're trying to do is 
find i don't know how why they didn't keep a record track down all the meals. yeah and like you send them a picture and be like i saw one and it, it, it's at a diner in oh. west virginia huh. like 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 it's just such a strange yeah, it's like thing. How they, they cared enough about it but then right. they just gave them all away but they they bought they sold them miles of mules if you want it um i think it's the name of the book if you want it be part of it otherwise just go on the internet the moscow mm-hmm. mule is a drink right yeah i think it's some milk in it Moscow I think it's milk. Russian. I thought it was all about the cup. I just I think it's Russian. I think it's like a metal cup. It has to be a metal cup. Yeah, but I'm, I think like that, like I think that's part of it. But I think it's all, you think you put anything in that metal cup and it's a Moscow mule. No, I don't think that. I think it's a. I think it's presented in a metal cup, but I think it's milk. Milk. Yeah, I think no, it's, it's milk an alcoholic and, drink. I think it's. I think it's like milk and vodka. I'm only guessing vodka because it's Moscow. I don't know. I'm gonna get what, ingredients list right here. I'm going to guess milk and vodka. What are you going to guess? I'm not. I'm going to get Moscow Mule. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to guess it's very alcoholic. So it's more than one spirit involved. That's a spirit. So what are you guessing? That's it? It's not fair. Oh, man. I don't know them. It could be like the French fry, though. Right? Where it's not even for France. It has to be in a metal cup. Sounds like milk to me. Keep it cold. Because <laughs> you don't want ice in milk. Nobody wants to... The Moscow Mule. Nobody wants to. Uh, yeah, you're right. It can't, be, down, it can't be citrus. Water down because citrus. You can't have citrus in yeah, metal. Yeah. Oh my God. You're saying vodka? Yeah, because it's uh, vodka. Yeah, it has to be vodka. Fast. Well, what's in a martini? Vermouth. I don't know what these things are. Vermouth. If it's a milk. <laughs> Mule. Um, guys, I, it's been such a long time since Sunday. I forgot to bring up what we should have brought up from the beginning. That Phillies are in the World Series. The Phillies won the World Series. <laughs> it did not. <laughs> But maybe we can use that sound bite in a week or two. The Phillies are in the World Series for the first time since 2009. Ah, that was just yesterday. It wasn't. It was 13 long. Are you serious? Years ago. And we I've been asleep. I've been asleep. The Philadelphia Phillies. The fighting Phils. Are in the World Series going against the Houston Astros. And thank you, Fetterman. Thank you, Fe- <laughs> Phils for Fetterman. Phillies fans yeah, for Fetterman. there you go. People are holding their signs up. Um, it's it's awesome. I know. And the Eagles are undefeated. We're winners. We're part of a winning city, a winning region, a winning team. Just winners. Uh, I see a lot of people in the other country being like, "Ugh, nothing's worse than Phil." Like the Philadelphia fans are the worst, and it's bad enough to see them when they're losing. They're like, it's so much worse to see them winning. But why? It's like because why? Well, I, you know, come on, it's just a stereotype. They're haters. I was thinking about it. I don't really like baseball. And I don't really like Phillies fans or Philly fans. Philly fans. I don't really like Philly fans. Like, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not climbing up the greased poles and stuff. But I think otherwise now, because how nice is it that we we kind of have like an old school town? I, yeah. I really, I would, I would ask to show me the city that cares. Like, so it's one thing. Oh, like you care, like uh, L.A. We love the Lakers or something, right? Like. Show me a city that cares about all their sports. I'm like a lot of cities, Spencer. No, but I'm saying you're saying any other city has baseball fans the same way we do. Yeah, I'm guessing. I mean, uh, no, I don't know. You're them, guessing because but... you've never been there. Okay. Even like New York, the Yan- like, oh, with the Yankees fans. Like, yeah. I don't think it's a, it's quite the same no. as like diehard Philadelphia Phillies fans. Like little kids to adults, and it's not. Just, it's like to old men that are like screaming and going to every Phillies game. And for baseball, like I said, it's not one of these new age sports like American football. Yeah. It's baseball. <laughs> I thought baseball was dead. Not um, in Philadelphia. No, it was probably not... invented here. It, truth be told. <sighs> I doubt Abner it. Doubleday or something. Yeah. It was here. Like a New York Even if thing. he went. Yeah, because but New York was just Philadelphia. I mean, everyone had to travel yeah. away from. They're still doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too crowded. But no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. And if anybody doesn't like it. Then yeah, they don't I'll like fight it. You. I'll fight them for it. Yeah, fighting. The, the fightings, baby. The fightings. Yeah, I, I um, we call the Phillies. Yeah, I know. I don't know if you knew that. I did. The fight. Oh, you know what I love? Oh, now that we're on the topic, I don't understand it still. Mm-hmm. For some reason, the playoff. Have you, have you heard this? The, the, you, you haven't might, said it yet. No, um, you you might have like keep hearing the same song being played when the like, Phillies are winning. It's um dancing on my own. Oh. By Callum Scott. No. He like won a golden buzzer for it, but there's like a remix. It's like, I'm just dancing on my No, own. I don't know it. You'll know if you hear it. I did a better rendition of it. But it has nothing to do with winning okay. baseball. It has to do with being at, it was no, it's a song by Robin. Robin? Who? R O B Y N. Okay, but why? What's happening? 
Do you know that song? I don't know. Sh- I'm yeah, I in do. the corner. Okay, but why? Watching you kiss. Her. Why is it our? Why is it our song? I don't know. I oh, looked up an entire. Spencer, I thought you would. Have... No, I looked up an entire reason, and it's like so confusing. What? It's like, I think what had happened is one of the guys had it as like their walkout song. So they have like a playlist of songs yeah, that play. This, this is new. This walkout song after stuff. they win. Yeah, like a six song selection. It might have been like the first song playing when they clinched the playoffs for the first time in ten years, and for like. I was at Rally House, and one of the sweatshirts said "Dancing on My Own." Like, oh, really? After, if you see promos of like Xfinity Live, it's it's playing. But I love the song just as like a sad ballad song, <laughs> and for some reason, it's the Phillies playoff song. Yeah, it has tons and tons of history. Phil, Philadelphia Phillies um, baseball games are long, and I just, um, I've, yeah, I've been to a ton, but I don't recommend. <laughs> I don't love it's not your cup of tea. Hey, I don't love it. Every, everyone has their thing. Let's get into what we're getting into, guys. It is Wednesday, October twenty seventh. Six. October twenty sixth. Um, and what we do here on Wednesday is we have a little thing called one one word Wednesday. One word Wednesday is a day that we pick a word out of the dictionary and um, we chat about it. We we see if it has any significance in our lives, in our in our earthly lives, in our spiritual lives. See if we can maybe bring a Bible verse in, and um. We, we kind of used two. It could have been mule. I guess it's not. Yeah, so, but it, could, it could have I'm been glad. mule. I'm glad. I've kind of all muled out. <laughs> um, so what is the word today? Salt. Salt. I don't know if we did it before. Salt of the earth. It can, is, is it, yeah, salt of the earth. I mean, it's, it's a big enough topic that even if we did it before, we could do it again. Um, and, and, you know, mules need salt. If, if you have More a, than someone else? Well, um, you know, the animals that lick salt. Salt lick. Blocks. Yeah, salt licks. Deer. Animals lick other deer. No, the like deer. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you get salt lick if you want a deer to come lick it. Yes. And poor, guess what else? Those poor deer sometimes lick the salt off the road. Oh, no. It's I know. For them. Like, what's it called? Granulated. <laughs> <laughs> Rock salt? Rock salt. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. It's not good for them? Uh, well, you get hit, they get hit by a car. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if it was like bad salt and they die. No, it, I think it might be. Who knows? You know, those things aren't, ex- sometimes they're not pure salt. They're like, they have other elements yeah. in it. No, but I think more, more. Um, it brings them into the road. More dangerous. Yeah. Uh, it bring, when you, when it's winter. It's the most and, dangerous animal in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Not from killing people, but for people driving into it and yeah. crashing and dying. Yeah. Um, and so the, if you. You know, the tr- trucks in the winter, the, the deer come out and they get hit. But uh, yeah, so mules need salt. Animals need salt, which is so strange to me. Uh, and also salt licks are strange to me because it's like, what do you mean? Like, because I know people, farmers and and uh, ranchers put out salt for their animals. But in nature, they just know where to go and lick a rock. Well, people need salt. Yeah, people need salt. We definitely need salt. Sodium. It, it makes up. I know, but what I'm saying is animals in the wild, how do they know they're missing salt and they have and they and then they go and lick rocks. Sometimes humans know when they're missing salt, I think. Yeah. But you think you don't you don't think of it like that. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll crave something salty, not knowing why. You'll crave wow. French fries. But it's because you have low sodium. You cry too much. Sodium. And I don't know like I mean, I'm not a scientist. When it comes to this stuff, I but um, say that. like uh, electrolytes, the main electrolyte when they say electrolytes is yeah. sodium. Really? Because you need sodium to retain water, I believe. Because you know how like oh, too yeah. much salt makes you thirsty, right? It's because it's sucking all the water. Absolutely. In. So if you don't have any, you're just flushing everything out, right? And so no, that's true. And so, but so too much, yeah, too much is not good because it's you know high blood pressure mm-hmm. and and stuff, but having zero sodium in your diet will not let you retain the nutrients of things. Yeah. uh, The human body has a a body weight, has a concentration of salt pretty well equivalent to that in seawater. Oh, wow. I think that might be super meaningful somehow. We're part of the ocean. Yeah. Um, There was a... An old time cartoon with Woody Woodpecker. Yeah. What a woodpecker. What a woodpecker. And I just found something out and I'm like so intrigued. I remember. Intrigued. This, this this is from the 40s. So I don't really remember it. Like. <laughs> you were just a child. I saw it. 
<clears throat> where where the uh, the tr- Woody Woodpecker's being annoying as he always was, and so they put salt on his tail so he um can't fly away, and he can't fly away because they put like this huge pile of salt on Woody Woodpecker's tail. And I was like, today I'm like, wait, I'm trying to remember that because it was salt, and I'm like, wait, is that a true thing? Turns out that it's a myth. If you put salt on a bird's tail, he can't fly away, and they they don't know where it started, but it's a very 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 old myth. Mm. But anyway. When I look up the cartoon, I said to myself, did I see this cartoon? Woody Woodpecker salt on the tail. What I see is when I first look, it says Andy puts salt on Woody's tail. And I'm looking and I'm like. That's porn. What? (laughs) (laughs) No, I thought Toy Story. Ah. I'm seeing Andy and Woody. And I'm like, wait. Woody has a tail? No, but just the names. Oh. Andy Panda was a very famous old cartoon with Woody Woodpecker. And I want to know now. Uh, if, so you never found it. I never found one. I did find it. But I'm just saying, I want to know if the people who made Toy Story. Got it. Was inspired was it a, with the names. Was it an Easter egg from Knock Knock? Of Andy putting salt on yeah, the puzzle. Yeah, the 1940 tail. cartoon called Knock Knock. Did Toy Story harken back by, by naming them Andy and Woody? Because that's the two main characters. Really? Yeah. I doubt. I, I doubt. You know, the, um, nothing's a coincidence, you know. Did you know that in, in um, The Last Supper by uh, Da Vinci, uh, Judas's arm is knocking over the salt? Bad luck? Yeah. Is that where bad luck came from? We don't know. Who doesn't know? <laughs> the people we don't know where the dance on my own came from. We don't Nothing. know. No, because it's too old. These references are so old. No, but, uh, but that's what I'm... Oh, so... Yeah, but like, can we get anyone saying... People make stuff up, just like archaeology. Okay, so it's very so. Saying salt, bad luck, knocking over has been around forever. It's been around forever, and people make stuff One up. One of the earliest documented things we have is like from you know Da Vinci's time. Yeah, and he has it. It's like, did he start it, or was he going harkening right. back to even older? Right. We would have to to disprove. It'd be harder to disprove. Right. Because we would need to find a reference before that. So which, some people say like, oh, have? like. Oh, well, salt was really like you had to be rich to have it. And if you spilled mm. it, that would be bad luck. But it, people say it's older than that. And that you and then, you, you know, when you spill the salt, you throw it over your left, left shoulder. Right hand, left shoulder. Be, right hand, left shoulder, because the devil is be, is behind you and you want to throw it in his eyes. And you're, and you're deadly. Yeah, you're right. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. But they don't know where that came I'm from. I'm going to start carrying around salt and just doing that. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You should gotcha. do that. Um, also, salt, it, it's blessed salt. Uh, just like you bless holy water, you can bless salt. Oh, yeah. And is that, see, what, is that what makes the, uh, the the Himalayan sea salt? The pink one? Make it what? Pink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, right. So you wanted to know about um, the Bible. Yeah. Oh, no. You, you, you said the salt of the earth. Guess what else? What else? People don't know what that means either. I don't. You know what's funny? When when you, I came in this podcast and we were talking about salt, my main, you know, I write down my questions I have for you. Um, <laughs> my, my interviewer questions. Oh, yeah. My number one thing was, is what does salt of the earth mean? Because like it's one of those things where I wouldn't be surprised if I was like corrected on how I'm saying it. Because mm-hmm. it's like, no, it's not it's not salt of the earth. It's salt in the earth. There's, right. Like, so it's salt of the earth. Yeah. yeah. And it means like you're just a, a, a good person. Okay. That's what it means. And that's context clues. You're and just, that's what how people he use is it. Just the salt, he's salt of the but earth. When you, if like w- I tell people don't look up stuff in the Bible, figure it out for yourself and have it have your own meaning. But if you do look it up, people don't know. People make stuff up. People say it means this. It means that. So the, so the actual um, verse is Matthew 513. Oh, it's from the Bible. Yeah. Matthew 513. Jesus says, uh, you are the salt of the earth. But then he says this, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on under people's feet. So people just make stuff up about what it means. And guess what else? In That's Matthew 5.13. In Mark 9.50, he kind of says the same thing, which happens with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And he said, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Oh, are we talking about th- tomorrow or are we talking about today? I just picked it up for salt, but um, I want to talk about it. But to me, the, Jesus right there is making me feel like is water wet with this kind of salt. I don't salt, think salty. he is though. Okay, tell me. Read it to me again. The first one. The first one is salt of the earth. Yeah. You are salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. 
Okay. So people are confused. And I'm telling you, if you look it up, people are, people, some people feel like they know what it means, but they just made it up. What? And they'll say, you're, not, he's not saying we're salt. He's saying we're salt of the earth. And then they're like, well, what is salt of the earth? And then like salt, like salt can be good, you know? Well, yeah, but, but it can but, be bad. But like, so what is salt? Right? It's like, uh, it's like rock, basically. Element. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like um, mineral. a mineral. Yeah. And so it, it's kind of, of nice, right? Like, it's like, you people and like i don't know if it's talking about everyone or, or spiritual like i kind of see it as like the saltiness is like the spirituality mm, right like mm -hmm. that is like the salt because that's what makes that's what distinguishes you from every other mineral otherwise it's just rock rock on the ground pick it up what's different about this rock right taste it in geology class we I mean the geol the geology professor went around and um we had to like dis um see what each mineral was and for the one he said you know what is this and we're like we don't know he's like lick it you licked it you're like oh it's salt and how like, funny yeah it's sodium chloride or whatever right. you call salt and it's like that's one i mean you're not supposed to go around licking rocks but right actually no i think you, he was a big advocate of licking rocks i don't really <laughs> remember um but that was the it wasn't by eyesight it wasn't by okay so you, you can't see it you you can't you can't you know smell it has no it's odorless you can't feel the difference. Mm -hmm. You taste the difference. Kind of like spirituality uh, in, pe in people. True. Right? And so it's like you can't see the, the difference of two people that are that uh, like one one is living a, a, a God-filled spiritual life. One is not. You can't see it. Yeah. They can even speak to you, really. I mean, you, you can't really like you can hear it can get confused. Right. But um, so it's sort of saying like. What is, what is salt without a saltiness? Nothing. It's just another rock. Right. And what, what good is that? Nothing. And I think you, it's it's comparing that to people saying there is this intangible thing that makes you valuable, that makes you more than just this earth. Wow, that's really good. Thank you. Because it's as it's saying, if not, it's just a rock of the earth. And so you would just be soul, and, and God. Because he says we are earth, right? Yeah. Like you made, Adam was made from the earth, but but you have to be more than that, right? You have to be more than that, right? And, and it's and it's what value is this intangible value that makes you outside of the salt that's just in the earth. And I kind of like it because it is making it a very earthly thing, right? And so what is what is a salt without its saltiness? Nothing. What is a human being without its um without its their spirituality? Right. And, and it kind of says it should be trampled on and stuff it's like. It might seem like negative, but if you look at that as just well, salt, because it's empty, yeah. If you look at that from the salt analogy, it's, right, it should just be stones you walk on, right. It has no other use. Yep. Yeah, if a person yeah. without a spiritualness, it's not a person should be trampled on or die. It should be they should just roam the earth. Right. An earthly person should just roam the earth. Right. Uh, a, a spiritual person should be used for their 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 spirituality, used for their saltiness outside of just being a rock to walk, to trample on how about that i like it a lot because um you said something about it being invisible and actually i'm like not talking into the microphone um s what augustine of hippo in the fourth century I, we just talked about the, the blessed salt mm -hmm. um and when talking about this um blessed salt they're called sacramentals and uh, so someone say that's stupid, you know, holy water stupid or salt, blessed salt is stupid. But uh, this uh, this person said that it's a visible form of invisible grace. Mm -hmm. And so it struck me when you said that it was um, that it was invisible. Also, uh, you know, I had mentioned that it's also written in Mark. And if if what you say um, is how it was intended, which I, I can see that. It's interesting because the second half of Mark says, have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. That would make sense if it, it, the way you described salt, you would have this spirituality, mm -hmm. right, among yourselves and have peace with each other. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think that, I, and, I mean, we didn't really talk about like the, the, that kind of translated to the physical right. thing about salt is it has this intangibility that separates it from the other minerals. And it's not, like I said, I mean, went through it, taste, smell, right. feeling. I said mean, taste first. It's taste. And um, we ourselves, like, we talk about how, how similar we are and we, sh and we should all 
um, enjoy it. Like we should all remember that, you know, like right. stop, stop nitpicking each other. But right. then there's this intangibility that separates us. And it's something that we, you know, Jesus said we can lose. Right. right? You don't want to lose it. You want to be the saltiest person you can be. Yeah. Because just one more thing, uh, Colossians uh, 4, 6. So, th- so this is a letter um, from Paul. And he too says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. It's been a real salty podcast. It's really, it's all there. I love salt. I love it more now. It's all there. All right, guys. I am Spencer Cardia, and this is Molly. Stay salty, my friends. <laughs> Peace.